So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Rockstar Nation, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to stay to the end where our guests will be offering a free gift. As you know, all of our guests offer a free gift and all of these gifts can be found on the Agent Success Toolbox. You could find that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply texting the word toolbox to 444 444- 999 that's toolbox to 444-999 i am going to put today's free gift in today's show notes but if you want all of them including gifts from most of our guests that have come on the show just go to the agent success toolbox All right, Rockstar Nation, got a great guest coming out of the San Francisco Bay Area. William Leung is on the line, and uh, man, he is crushing it. He, you know, you know, a lot. Uh, sometimes our most heavily downloaded uh, episodes are when we interview rookies that uh, you know came out of nowhere and just went from zero to hero in a really short period of time, because that is truly how you succeed at this business with no money. You know, a lot of people come on the show and they've been doing it for years and they grow their business by spending more money. And uh, as a rookie, you generally grow by activities. And I think because of that, they get um, a lot of downloads. So Wilson's done some cool things. Two years in a row, he has raised um, the rookie of the year in his office. And, um, one of those rookies just went on to be the top 30 under 30 uh, with NAR. And uh, a couple of people had mentioned get him on because he is the guy that is raising rookies to crush it. And, uh, and so he's got a great free gift. He's got um, a ton of knowledge to share. So get your papers and pencils ready. And I'm excited. Wilson, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Pat, thank you for having me. I followed your show since I was a new agent about seven years ago. That's awesome, dude. Well, um, I appreciate you following me. And uh, why don't you uh, kind of give everybody a little rundown on who you are so they get to know you better? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Wilson. I've been in the business for eight years now. And I didn't really start a team until four years ago. So uh, four years of my career, I felt very lost. Um, I didn't know what the end goal was other than selling a lot of real estate. And um, until I got more clarity on that, uh, since then, in the last four years, we went from 10 families helped in 2000, I believe, 15. And um, last year in 2018, we helped 126 families here in the Bay Area. Um, How we were able to achieve that was obviously um, having segregation of duties in terms of having people focus on different things and making sure that I continually challenge myself to focus on the higher dollar per hour task and removing myself from uh, certain parts of the business. Yeah. I always love that. And, and you know, that always makes sense. And I don't, I don't care how many times I have to say it over and over again, right? It's all about the dollar productive activities. I said that in my book when it came out and, and the agents that are able to do that, and we're going to talk about how you did it, are able to succeed at, at such a high level. But um, first of all, let's get into some nitty gritty. So, like, um, you know, what was your ECI last year, Wilson, your, your ego commission income? <laughs> ECI, a.k.a. GCI, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, our GCI was about $2.6 million, a little over $2.6 million. And what's your profit margin? Our profit margin last year was about 30%, a little okay. under 30%. Um, that's obviously before tax. And that also includes paying myself a small salary uh, before I take uh, owner's profit. So, so seven fifty dollars or so, three quarters of a million dollars, you know, is, is what you're pulling out of it. And what's your, what's your team look like to pull out that sort of, pro, that sort of profit? What, how, how do you have it set up? Yeah. Uh, At this very moment, we have four staff. Last year, we ended the year with three. Um, My original assistant that was with me four years ago 
is still here and she manages our escrows and transactions. She has re- recently launched her transaction management business. Mm. Um, her checklist obviously is slightly different from on the team versus someone that she's helping um, that's uh, another agent. Uh, so she manages our escrows and closings. She manages all the touch points for consumers. And um, my second person is my director of ops and my listing manager. And uh, she primarily helps me with all the listings that we take. And of course, once that listing agreement signed from start to finish vendor management, project management, um, until negotiations, then I step back in. The third person is our marketing manager. And that person maintains our 33 touch, our 12 direct, everything that uh, we do social or if it's hard copy or if it's something that our agents need at open houses or if they're door knocking, she's the person that um, has everything prepared. Our fourth person this year is our project manager, our our property manager. And uh, we, we recently uh, launch that because so much of our byproduct of um, people reaching out to us is requesting for property management services. And then, of course, on our sales side, we have eight sales agents, including myself, me being the primary listing agent at this time. I would say out of the eight, uh, three other people on the team that are sales agents are able to take listings on their own at this time. So we have a total of 12 people, including myself. Wow. That's awesome. And um, so you must have these uh, agents like on, on, on really good splits uh, because your profit is nice for that sort of team. What, uh, what kind of splits uh, do you have with your agents? And are, and are they broken up with listing agent, buyer agents? Talk to me about that. Yeah. Um, how we've broken it up is we want to encourage all our agents to be able to go look for buyers and sellers. So our agents can serve both sides. However, when they start on a team, they start as an ISA and they have minimum standards that they have to perform every day. And there's metrics that they have to obviously um, perform at in a four to six month period before they become a junior agent. As a junior agent, they're on a 40-60 split. The 40% is uh, broken down differently on the buy and sell side, depending on their uh, involvement in the deal. So with uh, straightforwardly getting into the nitty gritty of the 40% for a buyer, 10% goes to sourcing, 10% goes to appointment setting and going on, 10% goes to the showing, and 10% goes to negotiations. So what that means is if the, if the team generates a lead and it's delegated to this buyer agent on a 40-60 split, their maximum earning potential is 30%. And of course, after one full year of a junior agent, depending on how many buyers and listings they service, there's a minimum per, they become a 50-50 agent on the team. We just implement it on the team. Once you're a 50-50 agent, every 12-month period, you're going to get an opportunity for anything that you source on your own to once you hit six million dollars of your own production so for example if they're on a 50 50 split and there's a total of a million dollar property that they help the client buy five hundred thousand goes to their credit and five hundred thousand goes to the team credit and once that five hundred thousand gets added up to a maximum of six million dollars their their sphere split goes to 60 40 so why are we doing that is because I realize there's a lot of talented people on my team. Um, if they're self-generating their leads, obviously they're going to want a higher split. And that's our way of making sure that we have retention and making sure that we encourage them to shoot for something else. But it's essentially a 55 45, right? I mean, it's, 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 you know, the way you're breaking it up, right? Cause half, half of the production goes to the team, half the production goes to them. And then, their split on their production goes up. Exactly. So uh, we have a very specific way of categorizing if it's a team source and if it's an agent source. So, um, and of course, without getting into too much detail, the general idea is we want to structure uh, the progression of our agents so that they have something to look forward to and they, they can obviously uh, be on the team and continue to earn more. Uh, of course, it's dependent on their production on the team as well. So they need to, if they want to make more, they need to produce more. And of course, with the team structure, if they go on vacation, we take care of their business too. And that's a benefit of being on a team. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so let's talk to you about raising rookies, right? So I, I'm tr- I was trying to think of the best way for me to ask this so that you would, you would be able to help people the most that are listening to this. And I think the best thing to do is like, let's just pretend Pat Hyben is, is 22 years old and I'm starting <laughs> in the business again. And I'm coming to work on Wilson's team. Like, tell me what I have to do day one and then take me up through my first full year because I really think that, you know, I, I might have been a great candidate back in the day if someone said, you know, I'm going to go work for him and I'm going to do whatever the hell he tells me to do. And no matter what it takes for 12 months, right? And, right. Um, and obviously people have done that and, and, and they've reached incredible heights. So talk to me about this. Tell me exactly what I need to know day one. So I think um, to help most of your guests, I think there's two perspectives. It's going to be your shoes, which are your brand new agent, and what are what are the expectations for you? And then, of course, let's say I'm whether I'm a team mem- I'm a team leader, or I'm a mentor or coach. What's my expectations um, out of the relationship too, right? Uh, whether people are looking to join a team or starting their own team, of course, the actions that it takes to let's say whatever you're going to do in your first year should be very similar. It's just a matter of what, what other support are you getting or what leverage do you have? So I think um, to start off with, it's going to be, it's just going to come down to the activities that you're going to perform consistently uh, for your first year. And um, the general idea is how much time are you going to commit to talking to number one, new people and number two people that you already know you can figure out the message later but if you have 24 hours in a day and you work five days a week of those 24 hours how much of that time are you going to spend talking to people it's as basic as that your follow-up will 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 um, come into play later your CRM system, how you follow up, the content you follow up with, the events that you host, the people that you need to hire, the systems you need to build, the checklist that you need to create, everything else follows afterwards. You can perfect those systems, but if you don't have people you're talking to and eventually bringing them into the funnel of the sales process, there's no point in working on all of that. So as a new agent, the recommendation is a minimum of two hours of lead generation a day. Lead generation is not sitting at your desk calling people you know. Lead generation is calling people or knocking on doors or hosting open house or going to events and meeting people and talking to people that you don't know. Tribeofmillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book, and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate. Was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. It's Team Tober here at Rebus University, and we're running a special for Real Estate Rockstar Nation. This special is going to save you 90% on your team's real estate training. And the cool thing is, as a team leader, you don't got to do nothing. Just put your team to work on this incredible training here's how it works this week it's the certified listing agent course buy one course buy the certified listing agent course yes the certified listing agent course where hundreds of teams have taken this course and many require it before any agent goes on a listing appointment if you buy one of those you get nine more for free That's right. One agent takes that sucker and you get nine other agents to take it, get certified completely on their time 
absolutely free. Buy one, get nine free. The cool part about it is you can then discuss it at your team meetings. Talk about everybody's progress and talk about what everyone learned. If you want to get the certified listing agent course for you and the rest of your team, nine for free, just go to hybendigital.com backslash teams. This offer is only valid for this week only. Next week will be another course. That's hybendigital.com slash teams. And it's going to be okay. So let me let me, basic. Let me let me stop you there because I, I, I want to make sure people heard this. You know, lead generation is not sitting at your desk, calling people that you know and telling them, "Hey, I'm a new agent." Right. It's everything and but that. Yeah. Let me well, let it's me not ask everything, some, but everything in in every, it's, every, yeah. It's a lot of it. And here's, here's why I share this with you. In your specific scenario, you're saying, Pat Hyben, you're a 22-year-old right now. I started in the business when I was 23. In our area, prices are very high. Um, they've gone up, obviously, since that time I started. And um, I've started in the upswing of the market. As a 22-year-old, my sphere consisted of many early 20 year olds yeah, and right. not, not real, not very many buyers, <laughs> so not many sellers and many buyers, right? right they right. weren't in the position. And I think and, any agent should have the assumption that they're going to build their business outside of their sphere. I think that if every agent had this assumption from the beginning, they would all do so much better, right? Just Think like Wilson says, now the sphere is going to come. Of course, you're going to let people know that you're in a business. Of course, you're going to talk to your sphere, but that's not included in the two hours that he's talking about. That's after the two hours. Correct. So I couldn't depend on my sphere. Um, they were not in the position to make a decision to purchase, and they probably didn't have a house to sell. It was a diff different animal when obviously they shared that their parents or someone they knew was thinking about transacting real estate. However, they knew that I was new in the business. I was a 22 year old and there might be a preconceived notion, of course, that in the industry, you need to have experience. You need to obviously um, maybe, you know, own your own house or uh, you, you need, you need some sort of context and that you can share about the market other than, Hey, I studied it in school or, Hey, uh, I've been in the field, but, uh, what's my track record of success. So what it depended on was I didn't want to lean just on my sphere. I knew that was going to be there as you suggest, uh, Pat, and that that's going to be gravy on a top. But what I needed to do with my time was to make sure that I outreach to people that I didn't know, that I honed my skills. And uh, I people that you don't know, basically, you have to work harder with to be able to earn their business. And that's how you're going to hone your skills to be able to obviously one day, once someone raises their hand in your sphere, um, be able to offer your, your, your help and your services. So Going back to it, it's just as simple as making sure that you time block at least two hours, and maybe you can start with one, but work your way up to a minimum of two uh, of talking to new people every day. And it's as simple as that. And um, of course, it's easy to let ourselves down, but it's not easy to let other people down. So having accountability in place, whether it's a coach, a mentor, or having uh, more responsibility in place where you have to report back to maybe a spouse or someone in your family or a friend to let them know that, you know, you did what you said you would and eventually starting to build that self-confidence with yourself so you can continue and uh, be consistent and build momentum. So talk to me about um, like, did you do anything different Wilson with regards to, um, how you picked these people. Cause it's not like you, you know, went right. And, and just hired 18 people in a month and threw them all up against the wall. And one of them happened to be the rookie of the year or did you? Yeah. Every single salesperson that I've hired uh, went through a very thorough process where we looked at behavioral assessments and we looked at obviously. Which ones? Uh, so specifically the disc uh, assessment. It starts with that for initial conversation. And, and then and what do you want to have? What was your goal with that? Yeah. So um, as I've interpreted a lot of DISC assessments and obviously gone through a lot of training, um, we see a consistency that 
the school system and, and um, our environment conditions us to be typically high S's and C's. Uh, people that are stable and they like consistency. A lot of times, unless you, you have a track record of, of helping SNCs become agents, SNCs are typically not the best profile or behavioral fit for being a sales agent. What we've seen consistently on our team for uh, salespeople is going to be DIs and ISs. And DIs are people that influence with results and like to be influenced by results. And ISs are influenced by empathy and sympathy and like to be influenced by others with empathy and sympathy. We found that at least on our team, the best team players and the best people that are serving business to consumer B2C are ISs. And these make at least on our team, the best uh, buyers agents, sellers agents, agents in general are I's and S's. That's interesting. And, and, and you know, as opposed to ID's, which a lot of people think that that's who you're going to hire. And, and I think that it, this probably goes to the fact that uh, if, if you're an IS versus an ID, you're going to uh, follow more in the realm of doing what Wilson tells you to do. You know, you bring up a really good point. Um, if there, there's only one uh, D in my business, and um, that's me. And I, I don't know if that's <laughs> by design or that's just that's just how we've grown. Um, I found that uh, when I've had other people that are DIs or IDs on the team, there's a bit more conflict, which at many times it could be healthy too. However, if you're a new agent and you're, and you're challenging a pre-planned process or a proven system that works, that's going to be a conflict because you're, you're, you might be looking for a shortcut or you're looking for an easy way out of being responsible for something that has proven to work. And I think um, without a track record, of course, I don't, I don't have anything to back myself up, but with a track record of training people and, um, implementing having people implement a process that we know works typically the people that just follow through and are social enough and feel have high enough um, emotional intelligence to relate to a client and be empathetic with them and sympathize with them that's the successful person at least from an agent level we've seen on the team um, be able to help consistently more families and of course surrounding those people with systems so that they don't have to do certain things and they have focus in how they spend their time has really been instrumental in our ability to grow okay so i'm going to ask you about the systems in a minute but first of all i want to ask you this and, and that is did you know did wilson know like you know at a certain point say early on you know, that these two rookies that became rookie of the year um, were going to be the ones or was it a crapshoot? Um, it, it, it was, it was both. Um, the people that I bring on and I have a philosophy in thinking about helping people. Um, I look for three values in a person that I bring on to the team. And the number one thing is, do they actually care for people? If they don't, they're probably not going to fit in this business and my world because... Uh, how do you find that out? Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, five new clients, 60 days. Boom, do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys, I am offering this to you if you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing appointment. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now, here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single series buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year step by step it's like a 12-hour course plus seven other courses yes you heard that right all for a measly 127 bucks a month if you were to go to rebus university and buy these courses individually it cost you over ten thousand dollars 
But today, if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com, that's futureofrealestatetraining.com, you'll learn what Bill Reek did, which is how to close 100% of the listing points you go on. Quite impressive. And you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered. Yeah, it's like all you can eat bizarre. You go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month. If you can eat all 11 courses in one month, that's all you pay is a buck 97. This is a bargain, guys. Get it now. Futureofrealestatetraining.com. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my Outdesk. If you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company, a VA company that specializes in virtual assistants for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators, marketing assistants. I'm talking about ISAs, inside sales agents that prospect thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups. I mean, these guys are trained in this stuff specifically. You're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales. Four out of five of the top teams in the U.S. use my Outdesk for their virtual assistance. And because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week. We are going to give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. So you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything. It's called Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And you can get it real easy. All you got to do is text the word HIBAN, H-I-B-A-N, to 31996. That's H-I-B-A-N to 31996. And download your free book, Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount, which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book. Thank you, guys. And I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my Outdesk. Based on their track record, based on their previous work experience, based on their relationships that they do have and that they maintain right now, if they clearly maintain a long-term relationship, that might be a good indication that they clearly have a mutual relationship that's a give and take, and they've maintained that, and they know how to obviously finesse that situation so that it's, it's, a, it's a healthy relationship. So finding people that care for others, that's, that's a key thing. The second one is, people that embrace hard work in their track record leading up to me meeting them, have they displayed that they don't look for the easy way out? Instead, they look for the right way to do things and they work hard because they believe in that. That's going to be the second thing that's really important. The third one is, have they shown signs of coming from contribution? Can they, as much as this is, we're salespeople and this is a sales role, in real estate, it's more of relationship building. If you walk into a conversation or you walk into an appointment or consultation and you have an expectation you're going to get something out of it, you're probably going to give indication and obviously push people away. So from the get-go, when I first meet someone, are they looking for only their best interests or can they see the mutual benefit of, hey, I'm exploring a team and I, I really want to know, you know, how can I add value to the team too? What can I do? Um, or in their track record, in their previous roles, what have they done up front to better, obviously, the consumers they serve or to better the team or the business that they've been involved with? If they have those three qualities, typically they are going to be a team player. They have the right values. Um, they're going to be able to grow as long as we uh, show them exactly what activities they need to do consistently over a period of time. And that's basically the foundation that we look for in the people. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that, that I hope everybody wrote those down. If not, you know, rewind it and play it on half, half X uh, speed and, and uh, get that. Cause that, that's all brilliant stuff. And guys, it, it all, 
you know, success of your people is so much more, you know, before you hire them than when after you hire right. them. Um, obviously, there's, you know, uh, there's reasons why your people also, you know, have made it to where they have made it. And, and, it, and, and it is twofold. It's not just one. So let's talk about the second half, which is the accountability piece. What do I expect as a new agent besides you saying, Pat, you got to prospect two hours a day? And um, that's a great segue. And I think uh, it's one thing, I think a lot of people in my position or a lot of people uh, coming into the industry and trying to mentor people have a, um, a bad way of thinking about how to lead someone. And I've, I'm sure everyone's seen, you know, a picture of a boss versus a leader before, where a lot of people have the mentality that, hey, I'm going to tell you to do something and I'm going to monitor you and micromanage you and I'm not going to do it. And I think that's a flaw in many people's business because let's say we have a lot of experienced agents. They're very repeat and referral business. However, they don't, they, they know they want to build a team for leverage and they want to build a team because they have a byproduct of buyers, for example, to serve. However, they don't do the activities that they preach uh, to their agents to do, such as door knocking, such as making X amount of calls. You have to lead by example, right? You can't beat a boss to tell people what to do. So I think a lot of our success uh, has uh, also been accredited to me being in the trenches, doing the same activities held to the same standards that I expect my team members to do. Um, if anything, as you grow a business, business gets messier and you have more responsibilities, but I still make sure I maintain my two hours of lead gen. And that's the key thing to our growth because at the end of the day, the more leads you have because you lead gen, the more choices you have to work the lower hanging fruit. And eventually you're going to have a surplus of people that you're just going to have to delegate. Otherwise you're going to be losing that money, even if it's 50%, whatever it is. So the key thing for us is I'm going to share something that makes sense that, that makes sense for you to do, Pat, which is two hours of lead gen. In the beginning, I want you to see me doing it side by side, see my conversion, see me tracking it, and see me put it into the database and see our team follow through on follow-up with our third Okay, man, and when you say you, you mean Wilson, right? Like you're, you're, you, does, does everyone come into the room and you're doing it with them? That is correct. Okay. Every morning, okay. our follow-up is there. Every afternoon, we lead gen at the same time. If not the same time, we let each other know, but at the end of the day, we put our stats in a, a shared Slack chat so that everyone can see what everyone did that day. Yeah, so that's awesome. So at the end of the day, you all go to the Slack room, designate it, and you just put it in there, and it's clear if someone didn't post theirs, and and uh, everything else is clear because you can't, they can't BS it because you know you were sitting in a room with them for the last two hours. So, so eventually, exactly. they'll be like, hey, they're lying. Um, yeah, that's, that's really good. Okay, what, what other um, like systems are in place? And I'm talking about things you, you, you buy or you utilize uh, that other people listening can utilize. So for instance, like, you know, you know Slack. Uh, that's right. just one example of accountability daily for your agents. What else? Yeah, so Slack is our choice for communication. Our staff uses Asana, and we have all our templates for listings, escrows, marketing in there. We use Google Suite for a lot of things too, including obviously shared docs. Every single agent on our team has a pipeline, and we borrowed that from, we have two members of the team that uh, worked at one at Oracle for B2B sales uh, for selling software, and another one sold uh, artificial intelligence software at a, a startup company locally here. And what they brought over to our team was, we categorize our pipeline. So as much as, let me, let me give more detail, as much as we have our CRM and we have, you know, five, five figures of names and numbers and we have categorizations and groupings and tags and all that, sometimes the lowest hanging fruit should be always in front of us. How we do that is we have a spreadsheet of a pipeline of people that we're actively working with that have identified themselves and raised their hand and said, hey, I'm thinking about buying or selling. And we, we categorize them by percentages, 100%, 70%, 50%, 30%. Of course, each categorization has a different thing. So if they raise their hand, they might be a 10%. If we get an opportunity to sit down with them for a consultation, they move up to 30%. Once they sign a contract, they're at 50%. 
if they get into escrow, they're at 70%. And obviously, once they close, they're at 100%. So with that always in front of us, alongside with, for example, our CRM, when we start our day, we first look at our pipeline to see who do we need to be in touch with first. And then our second priority is follow up generally with our, with our uh, CRM. So um, we use that as well. Um, and there's probably so many other tools that I'm not talking about. Uh, one of them probably being CTE, Commitment to Excellence. It's a spreadsheet that tracks everything that we do and my staff updates that. Um, so uh, we also have something called our optics, which is basically a spreadsheet on Google. And it gives us a high level summary of buyer sold uh, volume, seller sold volume, and it tracks it against obviously the previous year. And um, we also track how many contacts as a group we make, calls, ads to the database, appointments book held, gone on. And we summarize it all on one page so that during our team meetings and also it's posted on a big screen every day in our uh, team office, people know exactly how our business is doing. And as much as, and I'm sure many of your guests have heard, it's one thing for us to make sure that we constantly share a vision. It's another thing for people to know exactly how the business is doing. And we can get it to a granular level too per agent productivity and we can post that so everyone has transparency in what everyone's doing and how much money people are making and how they're doing it and we give them the opportunity to share their wins and gratitudes obviously during our huddles and our team meetings. It sounds like a lot that we do. I think the key thing for the individual that's listening to this right now is making sure you start with the activity. As we said in the beginning, without lead gen, there's no lead follow-up. Without lead follow-up, there's no pipeline of servicing leads. Without, pipe, without a pipeline of servicing leads, there is no tracking. There is no systems. So the key thing is keep it simple. Lead gen, talk to people, build relationships. You'll figure out the rest later by listening to the show, by going to training events, having a coach, whatever it is. That's awesome. Wow. Phenomenal, phenomenal advice. Well, well, let's talk about your free gift because this, this is a valuable free gift. And I think this is going to uh, make it all worthwhile for people. By the way, guys, everything that Wilson was talking about today, uh, some of these things that he was spitting out, we're going to try to put all those in the show notes. Of course, that's going to be on hybendigital.com. Wilson, L-E-U-N-G. That's hybendigital.com. Backslash Wilson Lung, L-E-U-N-G. And, um, and uh, I'm going to put his free gift there and uh, some of these uh, links to other things that he's mentioned. But go ahead, Wilson. What's your free gift today? Yeah, our free gift is our first 90 days for a salesperson to join our team. It's They're called Inside Sales Associates. And the first 90 days, of course, Inside Sales Associates on a team is going to have a bit more leverage so that they don't have to do certain operations work. So wait a minute, let me stop you here. So is this, if I'm an agent, am I considered in this 90 days or is this just for an inside sales agent, so to speak, of a, a salaried person at Japan? So it's going to be on the sales side, whether it's, it's labeled as an ISA and a salesperson will be able to utilize it. They just might have to make some minor adjustments to it. But the key okay. things, highlights of it, the primary duties are going to be on there and it's going to be I the mean, same. Most young salespeople that are just getting into business should be ISAs for 90 days anyways because you're really not going to do anything uh, ex ex except you know open houses and, and showings as they come up, right? It's not like you're going to be outside sales agent that often, right? That that's right. And um, it's, it's basically what you said, making sure that what we list on there is what we call it a 20% of the, the most important part of the job, which is going to be activities that you're going to do to be able to put yourself in front of people. Okay, cool. So guys, I'm going to take that and we're going to put it in his show notes. I'm also going to put it in the agent success toolbox, which can be found on hybendigital.com backslash toolbox, or you can simply text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999. Wilson, if I'm ever in the San Francisco Bay area in the near future, I will definitely look you up. We can break some bread and I'm looking forward to watching you create the next uh, rookie of the year this year and uh, the next uh, 30 under 30 uh, candidate. So uh, congrats. I appreciate that. Keep going, buddy. Thank you, Pat.
I want you to think about the word toolbox. What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.